I agree with you. Yeah, now, Mimba, without being so unfair to the government due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as we review the 2020 budget, it is equally important to address some, of, some if not all, of their objectives and how feasible they were. For instance, uh, government had proposed to raise about 68% of the 106 billion Kwacha national budget from domestic revenue, 29% from domestic and foreign financing, and 3% from cooperating partners. Just how feasible was this proposal at the time? Well, I think part of what was um, not going correctly um, when it came to the, when it came to even this year, and when we we're actually trying to plan out this year, was actually that um, uh, the 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 budget plan seems to be quite optimistic from last year. It actually seemed to be quite strongly optimistic, and I think that's where I think a few of the concerns were actually coming from, even from my from from my view. The economy was already on a downward slump. Uh, so a lot of these these trajectories and trends, and even trying to raise that much money, was on the basis that the economy was going to grow by three point. I think they had about three percent or so uh, economic growth. That was that looked like it was never going to happen, given the slide in economic growth that was actually coming. So, uh, to be honest, um, a lot of what's happened in the economy right now was on the books. The coronavirus is just the perfect mask. Uh, to kind of make it look like something has actually turned the economy uh, negative. That's, that's, that's the way it's actually looking. Right. Now, in view of how 2020 has turned out, uh, what do you think are the lessons that we expect government to have learned and therefore drive the 2021 budget? Well, look, the, the lessons that I think government would have learned in view of how 2020 has turned out and also even the years before was internal production is much better than external. And reliance on external economic growth uh, sources is, uh, is, is, is quite detrimental and quite painful uh, to the Zambian economy. So I think the number one point I think we all need to start looking at here is we need to start looking at internalizing as well. And secondly, there needs to be the possibility of also looking at decoupling uh, from China, which is a point I think I'll bring up very soon. But it seems as though that's a lesson that should be learned. But granted that, look, we are going to go into an election cycle. My views of this lesson kind of being learned at the time of this election I'm not, um, I don't have much confidence going into that, that all of a sudden those are the lessons we're going to magically learn. And then secondly, we should have learned the fact that our internal entrepreneurs, our local entrepreneurs, have literally been hampered by hectic regulations. But it appears that um, the, the story of the regulation is not on the book. So uh, I, I, I think there are lessons that could be learned, but it doesn't seem like there are lessons that, that have been learned and whether they are going to be applied, that's a different story. Right. Now, uh, would you say the president's speech last week, Friday, was a direct precursor to what we should see in the upcoming budget presentation? And how do you think our stakeholders are preparing for it? Okay, so uh, we're starting to see some movement in the FX markets, um, if we're being correct. That's the first thing I can tell you. We're starting to see some movement on the forex markets. The first thing I think I can point at here was, as the president was speaking, there was a literal vertical jump of the FX rate. And I think I tracked it again uh, on Friday, right around the time he was speaking. It literally just moved from the 1960s into the, 19, um, into the 1980s on the interbank rate. And then on the forex transfer rate, all of a sudden it went from 1970s and in, into the 1990s up to 19.94. So you could literally see that the, president, the president's speech, unfortunately, may have not had the best um, outcome, uh, especially on the forex market. So now, in terms of the actual speech itself, uh, I'm going to break this down into three parts uh, in terms of the actual speech that he was dealing with. The three parts that I've actually seen was the contents of the speech and the direction it was showing. In other words, what it was saying to the stakeholders, the, the issues of decoupling from China, and then kind of what was being used as the corona blanket. And, and unfortunately, no one seems to be, um, no one seems to be accepting some of these facts. I think the first one we can touch on is um, the tone of the speech and what it presented to, to the investors because the tone of the speech was very important. Now, the first thing I pointed, I, I could actually see, was the tone of the speech by the president was defensive. It was, it was very defensive. He was talking about sustainable development, survival. These are the terms he kept on using. Survive, survive, sustainable, adapt. It wasn't talking about growth. Now, I've been talking a lot that Zambia is in a situation where economic growth has been the key problem. Lack of economic growth has been the key problem. Now, we went into this situation where, well, basically, I'm, I'm going to throw you back to an old favorite Champions League game that I think everyone can remember, if, as if you're a Liverpool fan. I'm not, but I'm a brother to a Liverpool fan, so I think you always remember this. 
2003-2004 AC Milan Liverpool three nil down. What's your choice if you're three nil down? Do you defend? No, you have to attack because what's the difference between being three nil down in the final and being four nil down? So the problem I think is we are defending, but defending what? We're not defending a good position. It is not like 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016 were good years. They were actually pretty, pretty tough years. And I think that's the thing we're not pointing at. Economic growth has been sliding downwards since 2011. Yeah, now, uh, Munyumba, um, last year's budget, uh, I think um, the Minister of Finance, Honorable Bongandu, was coming from a position where we had, um, you know, austerity measures that had been announced in 2018, 2019. So wouldn't you think the President's speech to be fair to him, uh, was on uh, bordering on the, on the line of we're coming out of, we're still in the coronavirus uh, situation. So we defend our position at least whatever we can hold on to instead of uh, thinking forward and forgetting about the issues we have in 2020. The problem is that what are we, and I say it again, what are we defending? We, we, we're not defending a strong position. We're not, in fact, we're not defending any position. We're already heading for negative growth. This is what I'm trying to say in 2019. It was 2.3%, 2.3%, 1.7%, and 0.2%. The natural trajectory of that was a negative economic growth. This wasn't caused by the coronavirus. We were heading for a contraction. We were due for one. And the reason is that I'm going to bring up is the coupling with the Chinese economy, which is the one thing that doesn't seem to be getting addressed. So the, if you're going to get out of this position, you're going to have to get out of it through an aggressive, uh, an aggressive strategy. Let me give you another example of where I see defensive talk again. One of the prime things that we keep talking about in Zambia is cooperatives. We keep saying our cooperatives. We need to get our young people to form cooperatives. People, cooperatives are not a good strategy. And I'll tell you why. Cooperative, people don't form cooperatives because they have visions of growth. They form cooperatives to cut costs. They form cooperatives to save money and cut costs and to survive. Those are survival mechanisms. You see, and this is one of the reasons why even our farming our, our, our farming industry and our agriculture industry hasn't fared very well because we've left it to survival farmers. We don't have those, um, you know, in South Africa, they've got those, those Bura Makaplan, uh, uh, in other words, that means a, far, a farmer will make a plan. Afrikaans farmers who love farming. They, they, they put everything they can into farming, and that's why the South African food supply is kept by them. They, let me give you a simple example. Look at their, their milk. Their, 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 their cattle that come out from, from farming are able to produce far more. I'm just trying to say, when are we going to get to a point where we're focusing more on enterprises, more than we're focusing on cooperatives? That's a defensive strategy yeah. to sustain and manage poverty. Yeah, now, uh, just before you go, Munyumba, uh, last year's budget, um, most of it was centered on uh, you know, uh, gaining revenue from domestic uh, revenue and domestic financing. What angle do you think we should go in 2021, the budget for 2021? Okay, so if they're going into the budget for 2021, as I've said this before, you've got to try and focus on entrepreneurs. You've got to try and focus on deregulation. Another point I keep pointing out is there was no talk of deregulation. These are the kind of things that we've got to try and work on as well. And the second thing we've got to focus on right now, and somebody needs to actually talk about this, we need to decouple from the Chinese economy. We all do you know that 60% of our economic growth is explained by China. Uh, so we are 90% correlated to the Chinese economy. In other words, when China shifts down, they go down. Now, here's the fact that nobody seems to be pointing out. China is transitioning to a service-driven economy. They're moving from a manufacturing to a service-driven economy and a first world service-driven economy. Do you know what that means? That means that economic growth is never going to go above 4%. That means Zambia, if we stay tethered to the Chinese economy, we're going, to go, we're going to grow at zero for the next 10 years if we continue this trajectory of linking ourselves to China. So we must decouple with China. Yeah, Munyumba, I'm sure we'll have you back uh, to discuss more as we build up to the budget presentation. Thank you for coming through, as always. Thank you very much.